you, Madam Chair, members of the board. It is 9.30 a.m. Today is Tuesday, June 2nd. My name is Brian Zumwalt. I'm the director of the county's Office of Technology and Innovation. I'll be playing the role today of technology moderator for today's virtual meeting. On the panel with me is Don Crow from the county attorney's office. He'll be serving as process moderator for this meeting. Before we get started, I'd like to do a quick roll call and ensure that we've got communications for each commissioner. Uh, we'll start with Commissioner Eggers. Good morning. I'm here. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Seal. Good morning. Good morning. Commissioner Welch. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, sir. Commissioner Long. She, she's on the floor. Um, I heard her a minute ago, so, but not online yet. All right. We'll give her a minute here. Uh, Commissioner Justice. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, sir. Commissioner Peters. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, and Commissioner Gerard. Good morning, all. All right, Madam Chair, meeting's well, yours. Yes. Thank you. All right, I'd like to start this meeting with a moment of silence, um, thinking of peace and healing for our country, but also change. Thank you. Um, okay, we'll start off with four public hearings. Go ahead. Oh, you're muted. Matt, you're muted. Good morning. Sorry about that. No um, item number one is case number CW 20 05, and it's a proposal by the city of Tarpon Springs to amend the countywide plan map from activity center to activity center regarding 1.46 acres, more or less, located on the northeast corner of East Live Oak Street and North Hibiscus Street, south of Athenian Way. This allows for the subject property to be redeveloped into townhomes. The public hearing was properly advertised the affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondences have been received. The matter is properly before the authority to be heard. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions? No. Okay, do we have anybody on the line that would like to speak to this? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to speak on this item, uh, please hit star nine if you're on the phone or raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, there are no members of the public that wish to speak on this item. Okay. Well, we will Move close approval. the public hearing. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Eggers, second from Commissioner Welch. Uh, all in favor say aye, raise your hand. Aye. aye. Motion carries 6-0. She's not here yet, right? Okay, item two. Item two is uh, case number CW. 20-07 and is a proposal by the city of Largo to amend the countywide plan map from recreation open space to employment regarding 5.62 acres more or less located mm -hmm. on Highland Avenue Southeast, approximately 400 feet south of East Bay Drive. The public hearing was properly advertised. The affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received. The matter is properly before the authority to be heard. Thank you. Uh, does anybody feel we need a presentation on this? Okay, good. Commissioner uh, Justice? I, I don't know of a full presentation, but I did have a, a question if from the city, is the city doing this and they don't have any further plans to expand that recreation area further north? Uh, to where this site would be? That was the only question I had. So Rodney Chapman's on the line and he can certainly address uh, your questions. Uh, good morning, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Justice, can you repeat your question? I had a glitch uh, when you were talking. I just didn't know. So assuming that the city uh, has no plans to continue to develop that recreation, that nature space is south of there yes. into this area. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, that is correct. That was that was a question that was posed at the Fort Pinellas meeting, and the city did confirm they have no plans to further develop the recreational property uh, in the area. This is only limited to the the subject property. Okay. The recreation area is largely west of there. This is this has never been part of the park. No, I know, but okay. All right. All right. Any other questions? Okay, we can close the public hearing, I guess. We have not had any correspondence about this, right? Correct. Right. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Um, we do need to take Oh, I'm sorry. Do yeah, we have do, at this time if there are any members of the public that wish to speak on this item, please hit star nine if you're on the mm -hmm. phone or raise your hand virtually. And Madam Chair, we do have one speaker that wishes to be heard, uh, Ms. Katie Cole. Okay, um, well, I know she's, okay, great. Katie, go ahead if you can hear us. Katie, can you hear us okay? Katie, you're gonna have to unmute your mic or speak into the microphone. Yeah, she's unmuted, Madam Chair, but I'm not hearing any audio coming. Coming. Okay. Well, we know that she's a proponent, so okay. um, we have a motion. I would move approval. Thank you. Second. Okay. Hey, we have a motion from Commissioner Seal, second from Commissioner Welch. All in favor, raise your hand, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, unanimously, I think. Commissioner Long, did you vote? All right, uh, Commissioner, or er, item three. Item three is uh, case number CW20-08 and is a proposal by the City of Clearwater to amend the countywide plan map from public semi-public to office regarding 0.729 acres, more or less, located at 407 North Belcher Road. The public hearing was properly advertised. The affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received and the matter is properly before the authority to be heard. Do we have any questions? Is there anybody on the line that would like to speak to this? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to speak on this agenda item, please hit star nine if you're on the phone or hit raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, it doesn't appear we have any speakers that wish to speak on this item. Okay, and it appears as if this uh, change is just conforming with the current use. So I will entertain a motion. Oh, so moved, move approval. Okay, Commissioner Eggers. And Commissioner Welch. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item four. Item four is case number CW 20 09 and is a proposal by the City of Safety Harbor to amend the countywide plan map from residential low medium to recreation open space regarding 1.05 acres, more or less, located at 1550 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Street North. The public hearing was properly advertised. The affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received and the matter is properly before the authority to be heard. Okay, uh, do we have any questions? Not very often we see changes in this direction, so <laughs> nice. Um, do we have anybody on the line who would like to speak to this? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to speak on this agenda item, please hit star nine if you're coming in on the telephone line or raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, there are no citizens that wish to be heard on this item. Okay. Well, Move approval. Close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner Eggers, second from Commissioner Welch. All in favor say aye. 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 Is 
Mr. Peters, did you vote? I didn't see you. Okay. Uh, motion passes unanimously. Item five. Oh, consent agenda items five through 10. Um, is there anything that needs to be pulled from the consent agenda? Okay. I will entertain a motion then. Move the consent. Thank you. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Welch, second from Commissioner Seal. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Okay, uh, item 11. Commissioners, item 11 is uh, an extension of the local state of emergency that would cover the period June 5th through June the 12th. Do we have any information that needs to be presented at this time or that anybody would like to hear? We're not changing anything. We're not changing anything. We're in on there. The, after our meeting on Thursday, and we removed um, the uh, issues that we had regarding pools and um, playgrounds, there was a little misreporting on that. It said that mm -hmm. they were removing any restrictions. And in fact, the restrictions are the, the state order. And so the safer at home order, the restrictions on group sizes um, and social distancing is still in place. So I'd like to highlight that, that, you know, in fact, we're still under uh, with the pandemic hasn't went away. <laughs> we're moving into a new phase and we're pushing it out through and continuing uh, to stress the importance of remaining vigilant, um, practicing social distancing and being safe during this um, uncertain time. Um, but the duplication of the, between the orders of local orders and state orders needs clarification. So I did want to highlight that, but no, there's nothing changing uh, today as a result. Mr. Eggers. Uh, yeah, Barry, is there, um, uh, could you update us on the, um, the emergency order that came out yesterday? Any updates or thoughts about uh, phase two? And uh, is there any update? Are we going to talk later in the meeting about the CARES program? Um, so we can, we can do them uh, ho however you wish. And so the, the order last night was an, a, simply an extension of the uh, moratorium on evictions for 30 days. Um, so that extended that through the month of June. Um, we do not have any information about when or if the governor will move to a phase two under the uh, reopening um, Florida plan. Um, now, in terms of the CARES Act funding, we talked about that, you know, some from before. Obviously, we um, at last Thursday, you extended the deadline for the current CARES Act program through June 30th. We're doing all the outreach um, that we can uh, to ensure people understand that that program is available for them. If you're out of work, if you lost work as a result of COVID, you're eligible for us to provide assistance and pay some of your bills. Same thing with as a business. If you had a storefront that was required to close as part of COVID, um, you in fact um, can receive assistance through the CARES Act funding. We're continuing to push that out and work with chambers and community groups and everybody that we can. And, and thank you for all the different ideas. We're continuing to move on those. Nothing, you know, is left, um, you know, unturned. We're, we're continuing to move that out. However, also as a result of the direction you provided, we've reached out to a number of community groups seeking input on devising a uh, framework for a phase two. Um, the phase two would, would expand eligibility categories and expand um, some of the criteria that would enact, um, provide assistance to folks. Um, we, we have, we've met with a, um, the, the staff has met with about um, 15 or 20 community groups. <clears throat> they all agreed that we need a broader reach. They're conducting a survey of different community groups and getting input from that. We're gonna do <clears throat> kind of a, uh, a Zoom, um, you know, um, meeting where we can bring people together and talk about the pros and cons and, and balancing uh, necessary uh, to be able to make recommendation regarding the funding. A lot of it is, as you've heard, and we asked one of the questions is, why aren't people accessing this funding? And, and the number one response we get is confusion. Um, people hear about state programs, they hear about federal programs, they hear about municipal programs, and then we have our program. Um, and so to with you know all the best efforts, People are, are confused. Um, and so we're continuing to try to refine that, make it simple, um, you know, and, and encourage people that if they've been impacted by this to 
um, to, to look at the program criteria and see if they're eligible. Phase two will be important. That's also one of the reasons that we know there's some tweaks that we could do to the program. The problem is it's not the program, it's the messaging. And we're concerned about getting more confusion. You know, so when we move to a phase two, we want to have a clear message to be able to deliver and, and, and what and who would be eligible under that criteria. So we're done. We're doing the hard and time consuming piece of, of um, talking with all types of community groups um, from in, people that provide assistance to individuals um, to chambers that provide assistance and workings with businesses um, to everyone in terms of the eligibility. Um, we'll bring back to you um, shortly, within a few weeks, uh, the, uh, the results of all of that combined information um, and input from the community uh, for your consideration in terms of forming a uh, phase two program. Thank you. Commissioner Welch. Thank you. And uh, that really was my question as well. And, and I agree with Barry. Um, there's just so much information out there and so many different streams for folks to get help that there is confusion. Uh, I was on a Zoom meeting with New Deal St. Pete last night, some really engaged folks, uh, and even they, you know, didn't clearly understand the different streams of funding and what's available and eligibility. So I'm really looking forward to this next phase and kind of tweaking the criteria, but also whatever we can do in messaging. And I know we're doing a lot, but just to make sure folks know about it. Um, I'm kind of almost waiting for the plague of locusts for 2020 because everything else is happening. Um, but on a serious note, you know, we were all, you know, really shocked by the, the murder of George Floyd. And um, we'll talk about that uh, later under commissioner comments. But one of the offshoots of that are the protests. And there is no social distancing happening in those protests anywhere in the United States. And I just concern and would like to get, you know, Dr. Cho and maybe uh, Dr. Jameson's take on what kind of impact we might see from that? And are we geared up for a surge that might occur because of that lack of social distancing, not only in Pinellas, but around the state of Florida? I'll jump in. Um, uh, so I, I share some of your concerns uh, and I, I certainly understand the concerns. In terms of uh, any mass gatherings. So the recommendation is, as you mentioned, the social gathering aspect. Uh, um, the CDC continues, especially in areas where you can't socially distance, to wear cloth masks. So some of the messaging that we'd like to sort of continue to spread, not only for uh, the the protests going on, but any any mass gathering events. Uh, additionally, uh, from a public safety standpoint, it is hot and humid out there, uh, and certainly the heat is a factor. So. We also encourage any hydration for those involved in those uh, demonstrations and protests. And even at the SpaceX launch, I think that's the right term, there was a photo of folks on a bridge just packed together. Uh, so it's not just the, the protests. What are we doing for our law enforcement officers? Because you see many folks where folks are in their face, yelling, screaming, and neither one has any protection on. Is that something being discussed with uh, law enforcement? That's certainly something I can mention the sheriff. Our law enforcement and our first responders do have access um, to um, protective gear. Um, and so they, they, they do have access to that. I, I have to defer to him. The sheriff, um, unfortunately, couldn't join us this morning because he was um, down in St. Pete last night till, you know, he texted me after 2 a.m., um, you know, and so, um, but, but they do have access to um, protective um, gear uh, for events okay. like that, and and certainly, uh, you know, I think Dr. Cho would encourage them to use that when you're intermixing with large crowds like that. Okay, so our first responders have that protective Absolutely. equipment. They uh, do. I'll jump in there if that's okay, Commissioner Welch. Yes, I share your concerns about the lack of social distancing in those types of uh, situations. Uh, our firefighters and paramedics continue to have every bit of PPE that they need, and they continue to use it on a routine basis. And I would certainly recommend that that's still the stance we should be in. And I would certainly echo your comments of, and Dr. Cho's comments about uh, wearing masks in general in the public when you can't social distance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything else on this? Do we have any? What happened to Brian? I'm here. <laughs> you moved. <laughs> um, do we have anybody on the line would like to speak to this? 
At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to speak on this agenda item, please hit star nine if you're on the phone line or please raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, there are no members of the public that wish to be heard on this item. Okay, well, I will entertain a motion then. So moved. Uh, okay, motion from Commissioner Peters, second from Commissioner Welch. Okay. Commissioner Peters, that was a motion, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven zero. All right, item 12. Commissioner, this is declaring a sheet of property, surplus property, and transferring the property to Habitat for Humanity. This is a 50 by 110 parcel uh, that we will um, turn over to them to be developed into a home. Move approval. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little slow this morning. Motion from Commissioner Justice, second from Commissioner Welch. All in favor say aye. Well, we, Commissioner, oh, we, we still need to take public comment. Yes, do we have any public comment? Thank you, Don. At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to speak on agenda item number 12, please raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting or hit star nine if you're on the phone. And Madam Chair, there are no members of the public that wish to speak on this item. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Item 13. Commissioner, this is a purchase agreement with the Florida Department of Transportation. Uh, this is for a uh, portion of county-owned property. This is, we're going to sell it to them um, as surplus property for their road improvements um, along US-19. All right, do we have any questions about this? Comments from the public, Brian? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to comment on agenda item number 13, please hit star nine if you're on the telephone or raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, there are no members of the public that wish to comment on this item. Okay, thank you. I will entertain a motion. So moved. Here we have a motion from Commissioner Welch, second from Commissioner Seal. There's nothing more. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Yes, sir. Item uh, 14. This is the seventh amendment to uh, purchase authorization for genuine um, parts company. Uh, this is actually it's called SourceWell. It's a public agency serving as a national municipal contracting um, organization. For locally, what this does is it provides parts to us, to um, Hillsborough, Polk County, cities of St. Petersburg, and Pinellas Park. They actually have a Napa auto parts store set up at our fleet department. Um, and so this is kind of an outsourced model and provides parts for all of our equipment. Um, and we believe it's an efficient way to conduct that service. Annual amount of $1.9 million. Okay, do we have any questions? Do we have anybody on the line would like to speak to this issue? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to speak on agenda item number 14, please hit star nine if you're on the phone or raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, there are no members of the public that wish to speak on this item. Just a quick will... question. Yes, Ms. Argus. Uh, Barry, is, uh, these, these large increases, are these um, I mean, we've had like seven or eight amendments. Is, are these due to others being added onto the contract? I, I would have to get Joe, Joe Laurels on the line. Um, in terms of the increases, this actually says it provides a more favorable contract pricing um, is what my notes have. Now, the increase, I think, is by adding more. But Joe's, Joe's on the line, and we'll ask him to answer that. Barry, I think I think Joe just jumped off when he thought that you we were going to vote. I'm not sure he's still on the meeting. <laughs> oh, hold on. Let me see here. Oh, there he is. Hold on. He's back. <laughs> Joe, can you hear us okay? Right. <laughs> You're muted, Joe. Oops. Hold on. Give him one second here. I just promoted him to the panel. He should be here in a couple seconds. Joe, can you hear us okay? You have to unmute. Joe. Joe, can you hear us? He 
He's on Barry, but I'm not. I'm not hearing him. I'm not hearing any any audio coming out of him. Commissioners, if you if um, we can't get him, if you can, we'll send you a written response today to all the commissioners in terms of what's you know driving the contract changes. If you're okay with that. Um, oh, there's Joe. There he is. Okay. Can't hear you. Still no audio. Yeah. Oh, we see him. Do you do sign language, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Joe, we still can't hear. Joe, you. was this was this adding more people to the contract? Is that the reason for the increases? No. Okay, I can't answer your question, the Commissioner. <laughs> I, I would like to hear the answer before voting on it. Maybe we can come back yeah, to that, it. How about Joe. how about we just um, put this item towards the end? If we can continue on and try to get Joe audio. Yeah, Joe, you great. can try and call into the meeting on the call numbers. I'll send it to you in Teams. Okay. Okay. So we'll come back to item 14. All right. Okay, item 15. Um, 15 is the ratification of the county administrator's approval and authorization to receive uh, CARES Act funding for St. Pete Airport in that amount of $8.7 million. There's no match required. It had a short time period for us to be able to turn that around. Um, I'm always willing to uh, take the chance of coming back to you and asking you if it's okay if I accept money. <laughs> That's a good bet. Any <laughs> questions about this? Okay. Hey, I will. Uh, do we have anybody on the line would like at this to time? To if this? there are any members of the public that wish to comment on agenda item number 15, please raise your hand virtually by hitting star nine. If you're on the telephone line or raise your hand virtually using the zoom button, please. And Madam Chair, we don't have any speakers on this item. Okay, thank you. I will entertain a motion. So move. Okay. Second. Um, we have a motion from Commissioner Welch, second from Commissioner Long. All in favor say aye. Um, aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, do we have Joe back yet? Let me see here. Let's try to promote him one more time. Joe, try unmuting. See if we can get you here. Joe, you have to unmute on your side. Uh, we still don't have audio. Okay. Uh, hold on. Uh, Joe, hit star nine if you're coming in on the phone. I can probably get you that way. Oh, there he is. All right, give me one moment, Madam Chair. Joe, can you hear us? Yes, yes, yes. All right. All right. Sorry, everybody. Greatly apologize. There you go, that go. Joe, yeah, you need boy. to shut off your computer audio. Joe, turn, Joe. Turn, turn, turn the volume down on your computer now, and we should be good to go here. All right. Can you Perfect. all hear me? Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry. As far as an increase goes, it's been pretty consistent, commissioners, over the years, between 1.6 to about $1.9 million. And this contract supplies everything, tires, oil, you name it, to our shop, like Barry mentioned earlier. So they're really, I mean, it's a slight increase each year but we are actually getting a decrease by 1% in gross profit, which saves us about 50 to $75,000 a year. So yeah, it's been pretty consistent over the years from an expense perspective. So, so the amendment is, what's the, the purpose for the amendment is adding another year? This thing is going through 2025? Yeah, it's, 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 it's to co-term with the actual contract we're utilizing through SourceWell. So the contract is going to co-term, co our purchase authorization is going to co-term with SourceWell's contract. We're in essence piggybacking a contract through SourceWell okay. for these parts. So this is a, a additional on top of the base amount for each year that we're getting, we're having an increase above that base amount. No, 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 no. The expenditures for, for this year, Commissioner, it's been consistent is between 1.6 and $2 million, give or take. It varies from year to year based upon uh, requirements and spend, but that's just an estimate. Typically, it's pretty much within that range year, year to year. Not an increase. Yeah. We're calling it increase because we're increasing the purchase authorization, the total value of the actual contract, like a better way to call it, 
awarded, but it's not actually a contract increase. It's just the expenditures the park okay. each year. All right, what's confusing to me, it says approved to date expenditure not to exceed 8.6. Seventh Amendment says not to exceed 11.6. Right, so but that, that's the total. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. That's a total amount of the expenditure over the term of the contract. For the, the remaining actual, term. Right. Okay. So, go right ahead. I'm having trouble here and I'm sorry. No, that's that's the additional for the remaining term. So for the next uh, three or four years. Right, exactly. Okay. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Do we have anybody on the line wanted to speak to this or did I ask you that already? I think we asked that already, Madam Chair. Okay. Well, I'll entertain a motion then. Okay, Commissioner Long as seconded by Commissioner Seal. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Uh, item 16. This is a companion bill to uh, item number 15. And this is the actual grant funding grant agreement for the CARES Act funding for the airport. Okay. No questions. Do we have anybody on the line? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to comment on agenda item number 16, please raise your hand virtually by hitting star nine or raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, there are no members of the public that wish to speak on this item. Okay, well, I will Move entertain approval. a motion. Move approval. Gotcha. Motion from Commissioner Long. Second, somebody. Second. From Commissioner Seal. Uh, okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Item 17. Yep. This is a capital funding agreement with uh, the Tampa Bay Watch for the construction of the Tampa Bay Watch Discovery Center and with the Florida Holocaust Museum for renovations at the Holocaust Museum in the amount of $300,000 and $350,000. Um, I move I approval for that. Second. Okay. Uh, do we sure. Yes. Just wanted, to, just wanted to state I'm doing my due diligence. I am at the pier right now, so. I see that. That's great. Is it open now? Just about. <laughs> okay. um, any questions about this? Yes, Commissioner Eggers. Yeah, that, just for clarification for anybody who might be listening in, these are projects that we've already vetted. These are projects we've already approved. Right. This is just the contract. You know, we're, I'm starting to get calls in for, for how we're spending money now that we're having anticipated budget issues coming. And um, this, these monies have already been approved. These are already in the pipeline. This is just the contract itself, correct? That's, that's correct. These were previously approved projects. Um, when we get to the um, your budget meetings, which are going to begin tomorrow, we're going to be talking about specific funding um, issues, uh, specifically one of them with the TDC and the bed tax funding. Uh, but these were already in the pipeline. These are already commitments in this. So this is just... Um, provides the agreement in terms of uh, executing those agreements. Thank you, Barry. Okay, do we have anybody from the public would like to speak? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to speak on this item, please hit star nine if you're on the phone or raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, we do have one speaker that wishes to speak on this item. Uh, this is Dwayne Virgit, and I'm probably butch butchering that. Uh, if you can go ahead and give us your name, uh, first and last spelling and address, sir, and then you can go ahead and address the board for three minutes. Hi, sure. Thank you. This is Dwayne Virgent, V-I-R-G-I-N-T. I'm the executive director of the Tampa Bay Watch Discovery Center. And just very briefly wanted to thank you all for your support. Uh, of course, I have to acknowledge Councillor Welch's background because uh, we really like that. <laughs> it's our new home and we're delighted to see that. Uh, but we're excited by the opportunity to provide the only marine environmental experience in downtown St. Pete. Uh, we believe that taking visitors on the journey of recovering restoration at Tampa Bay Will inspire local residents and out-of-town guests uh, to beneficial action, both close and afar. And uh, while we may, may not be the largest attraction in market, we believe that our location on the new pier and our combination of interactive experiences, living marine exhibits, memorable images will all provide another reason to visit the area. Uh, we also want to acknowledge the great support we've received from Tim Ramsberger and the VSBC team. And again, just want to thank you all for your kind consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Madam, well, we Chair. 
We do yeah. have a second speaker, Madam oh, Chair. Uh, Ms. Elizabeth Eagleman, I'm probably butchering that as well. Uh, if you can go ahead and give us your name, uh, first and last spelling address, and you'll have three minutes, Elizabeth. Hi, this is Elizabeth Gellman. I'm the Executive Director of the Florida Holocaust Museum. Um, and I just wanted to thank the commissioner, the commission for the support of this important security project and for all you are doing, all of you, in light of the challenges we're all facing during these extraordinary times. So thank you so much for your support and thank you so much for all you are doing for all of us. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Peters, second from Commissioner Long. All in favor say aye. 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 Brand, thank you. Item carries unanimously. Uh, item 18. This is the second amendment to the agreement with the Southern Group uh, for state governmental relations. This continues the same funding amount per year, uh, $78,000 per year. Move approval. Second. Second. A uh, motion from Commissioner Justice, second from Commissioner Welch. Do we have any questions? Anybody on the line would like to speak to this? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to speak on agenda item number 18, please hit star nine or raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, there are no citizens that wish to be heard on this item. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion from Commissioner Justice, second from Commissioner Welch. All in favor, please raise your hand. Aye. Motion Aye. carries unanimously, thank you. Item 19. As funding recommendations for the 2019 Memorial um, Justice Assistance Grant Program, this provides $268,000 for seven projects um, spread throughout um, the county. Um, and those are an attachment, but includes the Alpha House, Moore Health, Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, Suncoast Center, St. Petersburg Police, West Care, and Justice Court. Okay. Do we have any questions? Uh, speakers from the public. At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to speak on agenda item number 19, please hit star nine if you're on the phone or raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, there are no speakers on this item. Okay, thank you. I will entertain a motion. Move approval, Madam Chair. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner Long, second from Commissioner Peters. All in favor say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Okay, yeah, motion carries unanimously. Um, item 20. This is a renewal of a behavioral health transportation plan to support and facilitate uh, the, to the designated receiving facility. Um, this is a group that comes together uh, and they provide a, it was reviewed and authored by the Pinellas County Acute Care Committee led by Central um, Florida Behavioral Health. This provides a coordinated way. There's no direct financial impact. Um, but it's a coordinated transportation plan. Move we'll approval, Madam Chair. Second. Okay. We have a motion from Commissioner Peters, second from Commissioner Long. Do we have anybody on the line would like to speak to this? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to comment on agenda item number 20, please hit star nine if you're on the telephone or raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam, oh, we have one, I'm sorry. Uh, we have one speaker, Madam Chair. It's Ms. Linda McKinnon, who is the okay. CEO of Central Florida Behavioral Health Network. Okay. Linda, go, go ahead. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to um, speak and address you. Um, this transportation plan is a renewal. Um, it is a requirement for all communities to have one. <coughs> Um, at this time, there are not significant changes to the transportation plan, but I did want to let you know that it is a very fluid document, and as changes occur in the system of care, um, um, we will be potentially modifying that plan and bringing it back to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. If there are no further questions or speakers, all in favor say aye. Oh, I'm sorry. We had a motion from Commissioner Peters, second from Commissioner Long. We say aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 
Item 21. It's a renewal for, of a certificate of public uh, convenience and necessity for non-medical wheelchair transport and stretcher van provider. Okay. Do we have any questions? Move yes, approval. Second. Okay. I have a motion from Commissioner Long, second from Commissioner Welch. Is there anybody on the line would like to speak? At this time, if there are any members of the public that wish to comment on agenda item number 21, please hit star nine on the telephone or raise your hand virtually. And Madam Chair, there are no speakers. Okay. Well, we have a motion from Commissioner Long, second from Commissioner Welsh. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Item 22. Uh, Madam Chair, on item number 22, I recommend the board approve the settlement that I have spoken about uh, with each of you about uh, in regard to this confidential matter. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have anybody who would like to speak to this issue? If there are any members of the public that wish to speak on agenda item 22, please hit star nine if you're on the telephone or raise your hand virtually in the Zoom meeting. And Madam Chair, there are no speakers. Okay. I will entertain a motion then. Approval. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner Welch, second from Commissioner Seal. All in favor, please raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, Madam Attorney, do you have anything else? I do not, thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. Yes, Commissioner Justice. Thank you, Madam Chair. Since we're with our county attorney right now, maybe she wants to let us know what happened with the uh, lawsuit from one of the bars in St. Petersburg that sued the county. Yeah. Yeah, just in follow up, <clears throat> I know that um, my chief assistant, Don, Don Kroll, sent out some information the day of that hearing, but just to uh, give you all a little bit more information on what occurred, um, that was a lawsuit filed by a local bar located down in St. Petersburg that was essentially seeking um, the ability to reopen. And the county was named as a defendant, as was the state. And we essentially took the position in what was an emergency hearing before the judge here locally that uh, we were not the appropriate party since no order of Pinellas County was keeping that bar from reopening. And what happened that day is the judge dismissed the county from the lawsuit with prejudice, meaning that this lawsuit cannot be refiled against the county. Um, so we were dismissed. The, the judge agreed with us that we were not an appropriate party for um, the plaintiff there to be seeking a remedy against. Uh, I will add that in regard to the state, the judge also denied the plaintiff's request for um, relief as well, basically finding that, the, that they had not um, satisfied their burden in moving forward. Uh, so the county was dismissed as a party and um, there was no remedy granted against the state, um, at least at that hearing which was an, a, an emergency hearing. So um, presumably that lawsuit can continue on against the state, but the county has been uh, dismissed as a party. And I, I, I brought it up simply because it goes to the administrator's point earlier in the meeting about the communication and about the understanding of what the state is doing, what the federal government is doing, what the county is doing, what local you know, municipalities are doing, and making sure as, as best as we can to be clear with our citizens of what we've done. And in this case, uh, we had nothing to do with it. So uh, glad for the ruling. Yeah, Thank that's you, correct. And, and one of the things that we did point out um, in, as far as responding to the lawsuit is that um, after the state issued its order closing bars, we in fact leveled the playing field, I would say, by requiring restaurants to also stop serving alcohol. I believe it was at 10 p.m. And keep in mind, this was several weeks ago. Um, but again, didn't did not treat parties differently. In fact, here at the local level, we did what we could to level the playing field. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Administrator. Well, I'd like to start off my comments with a big shout out and thank you to two of our employees, Brandon Smith and Raymond Collins at our utilities department that rushed to the aid of one of our citizens that was working on their SUV and it rolled over on top of them. And uh, they jumped to action and saved that, you know, citizen from, you know, further harm. Now, they're kind of big guys, and so they uh, were able to, 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 the two of them move that. But big shout out. They, they, they saw something, they acted, 
you know, and they came to the aid of one of our citizens. So just a big thank you to them uh, for all that they do every day. But in this particular case, coming, you know, and having the, the forethought to uh, rush and take action. So um, just wanted to, to acknowledge all their efforts. Um, some of the other things that we've um, been talking about is kind of, you know, where do we go with here uh, with all of our emergency operations? We've been in a full emergency operation now for several months. You've heard the calls, um, you know, we're in, and it's, and that's going to continue. But we also have other business to attend to. And so how do we continue to uh, keep our eye on the ball regarding COVID, regarding understanding if there are, if our numbers are changing, uh, being able to respond to our nursing home issues, um, but also continue current operations. So we've been meeting as a team. We have a, you know, uh, we're going to continue our operations plans. We're going to do that in coordination with our executive policy group. We're just going to scale those down a little bit um, and have less frequent meetings, not every day like we were, um, but, but checking in, calling meetings as we need to, but then also scaling back some of our operations out of the emergency um, operations center. We do want to, though, continue certain things. So, for instance, as you know, we have a warehouse operation. Uh, we're moving millions of pounds of, of equipment. Um, out to our nursing homes, out to first responders, out to anybody that needs that. We don't want to stand that down because we may, in fact, need that for another outbreak. And so, in fact, we want to make sure that we're prepared uh, and we have supplies available. Um, but we may modify that operation slightly, um, but, but continue that in some fashion. Uh, we are really looking at, uh, at the way our test sites are doing. We're coordinating those with our um, our uh, community partners, um, but we're trying to get that to where we have our, our emergency operations. Lourdes will kind of handle uh, some of the community um, support and partner agencies um, because as you also know, they've also looked at our emergency operations to gear up for hurricanes. The, alter the planning that's occurring there is significant because it's a, it's a vast change from what our current plans were um, in terms of sheltering and alternative uh, sheltering plans and guidance from the state. Uh, so again, they're working through that, but we'll be putting out some kind of modified emergency operations. We're not keeping our eye on taking our eye off the ball, but we're trying to balance that with all of our different priorities and, uh, and needs within the county. So more to come as we roll those out, but I'm gonna announce that on Friday, you know, um, at, on our call, trying to kind of scale that back to allow people to balance uh, their varying duties. Um, the next item that I, you know, I wanted to talk about is you got budget meetings coming up. <laughs> so, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week, we have a lot of budget meetings. And um, as you'll notice, we're going to be talking about some of the economic impacts of COVID. Um, we're also going to be talking, though, about putting it in context um, in terms of the overall budget. And then there's specific areas where it'll have more of an impact than others. Uh, so we're, as we outline that, I just want you to be aware, we'll, we'll talk about those and talk about the balancing needs. Trying to predict out the future is very difficult to do, um, you know, and, and so um, we'll, we'll kind of be outlining that. But, what a, but a little bit different format this year is we're trying to do more analysis uh, through our budget analyst uh, in the departments and giving kind of a second set of eyes on the way we do business, opportunities for either efficiency, opportunities for improved um, service, opportunities to really use data to help drive some of those decisions. So we're going to ask our budget analysts to, to kick that off and give you their thoughts in terms of what they're doing in addition to hearing from the departments. So be a little patient. That'll be a, kind of a new, a new piece for us. But I think it's important to have, you know, two different sets of eyes come in and talking about issues, as, especially as we have to prioritize and think, think through how we do business. Um, so that'll be a little bit changed to the, to the format that we've used in the past. Um, the next item that I wanted to bring up was the um, Outback Key and the Vestal Exclusion Zone. So last Thursday, you provide direction that we're to take no action regarding implementation of the, the voting restrictions out there. As I talked to staff, though, and I talked to the chair, you know, we're concerned about bringing that back in two weeks because, I, you know, I do think and I agree with the comments that you that you said, um, we need to make sure we do this right and we need to hear from all the different groups. So I'd like for Paul Kazi to have an opportunity to meet with the bearing groups, hear different thoughts and ideas, um, and formulate those in terms of recommendations prior to us having that public hearing. 
Um, and so if we communicate well with them that we are going to have that, we're going to inform them. We just ask that that be postponed, not for two weeks, but to give him time to meet with varying groups and bring back um, some um, some thoughts and ideas. And we'll make sure we communicate with all of them, not only of why for the delay, but also when any when we eventually do have a public hearing, which our next one would be the end of July. So it'd be in the end of July or first of August time period, we would bring that back. We would make sure that they all know. Um, and so um, on both sides of the issue, and so everybody has an opportunity to be heard um, is uh, it, when we when we actually do have uh, that that time. Um, but that uh, if if you're okay with that, then we would move forward with with that modified timeline. I'm just concerned about two weeks being too quick for him to be able to have com communication with everybody involved. Okay. Yes, Commissioner Akers. Yeah, well, I think um, anytime we take the time to do it right and communicate on an issue that is really important to residents is a good thing. And um, obviously, uh, you don't want to look back, but uh, this is the way we should be doing it. And so, you know, I think it's uh, right to right and uh, to take some time, reach out to these folks, listen to what they have to say, and um, and then and then deliberate with all the information. So, um, looking forward to that, and I certainly support taking a little extra time. Thank you. Mr. Peters, um, I, you know, he's already met with the boating community. Isn't that correct? Right. So what I would, what I would ask is that you meet with them again. You don't just meet with um, uh -huh. random groups, but you bring them back together again um, and not exclude them again, but kind of really engage them. I think it's important. I agree. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Wong. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, so I would, I, I value the input from uh, Barry on the length of time it may take for this to come back to us. Given his uh, comments, um, do you have any optimistic thought about when it might come back, Barry? Well, we would target for the end of July, which is our next um, round of public you know, meetings. We have to do this 10 days in advance. The reason it's important to have this conversation now is because I need 10 days to advertise for a public hearing. So my last day to advertise to have it on the 23rd is tomorrow. Um, and so that the planning on, on some of this is important. The only other um, issue that I have to balance is, you know, we've talked about the next item we're going to talk about is in-person meetings and when we'll be doing that. Well, here's, a, here's another one where um, we've got kind of a pent up demand for some uh, items of, of, for a public hearing. And so I'd wanna balance that with the other competing issues and not have too many items on, or come back to the commissioners and say, we really should have a special meeting on this particular topic. Um, so we don't have three large community groups trying to come into one meeting space um, and creating you know, social distancing issues for us. So that was the reason I asked for a little bit of flexibility, knowing that we'll communicate with you, we'll communicate with um, all the interested parties uh, when we actually do schedule that time. But I, I needed to be able to balance that um, when we when we get there and trying to look at the varying public meeting needs. Follow up, Madam Chair. Yes, please. With all of that said, I do think it's it's very important, and I think a couple of you have already stressed that that we manage our messaging out to the community. It's not just the boating community that cares yep. about this issue. And I think that we need to make sure that we're messaging to everyone who really uses that area, cares about that area, lives in the area uh, and recreates there. So let's get a message that can be used by all of us to communicate. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. For uh, sure, Justice. Thank you, Madam Chair. Nothing real uh, to really add. I say, take your time. Let's you know. There's do it right. Let's do it right. Thank you for that. And then the last item I have, Madam Chair, is is really the question about in-person meetings that we've we've discussed. Um, you've received some of the correspondence. We've got a few items um, that we've been kind of hanging out there. And I think everybody's been kind of waiting. We're not in phase two yet. We don't know when that's going to occur. But I also have notice requirements for anything requiring a public hearing. 
Um, so it's important to kind of um, discuss that. So we've, we've looked at um, a couple of different, you know, methods. Obviously, when we come together as a, as a body, we can accommodate that out at the uh, Magnolia Room and, you know, and, and properly distance uh, folks and to where we can run a meeting and, and not have everybody jammed into the fifth floor. Um, what we, we can also, though, do a hybrid model. It's more difficult where, you know, I, and what we've heard, again, this is all hearsay that the governor would provide that you could um, continue to have um, and have the public or you participate um, remotely. And so in that particular case, you know, we'd have to set up obviously screens to where the, those that were in person, we have you, and then you could see the others on a Zoom platform, um, but also project it within the meeting room. A little bit more complicated and, and involved, obviously. Uh, we can accommodate, you know, either it's easier, obviously, if we have you all together and then just have the public call in as their, as their option. And so we include them in, they can make their comments. Um, but wanted to kind of put that out that we've we've looked at the room. We can accommodate any any um, different option that you choose, um, but but we do have some notice requirements, so we got to kind of make some of those decisions here soon. Uh, in fact, for the twenty third, I got a I got to notice it by tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> okay, thoughts. May I ask a question, Madam Chair? Yes, please. So, Barry, uh, what I know how difficult it is when you set up all our technology and everything uh, in a in a different place. I guess my question really revolves around what's the model that works best for you and your staff? Well, we've planned for just taking over that room. We're going to move the equipment, everything you see over at communications. We're going to move it over there. We're going to set it up and we're going to leave it there um, uh, because there's a lot of different um, groups and there's no way we'll be able to accommodate something using, you know, practicing what we preach in terms of social distancing by doing that on the fifth floor. Um, and so we have pretty much blocked out and said, this is <laughs> this is our room. And we're going to use this for the foreseeable future. That's the easiest way is to set up once, get it right. We can move the equipment to the back, have a different type of meeting, ones that don't require cameras, allow other people to use it in the interim, but leave all the equipment in place and just make that our meeting room until we have another option available. Then I'd like to, I'd like to go ahead and say, if it's okay with everyone else, how about we use that model and just move forward? And I don't know that we have to have an hour long discussion about it. I don't know how anybody else feels. That's all, thank you. Sure so Barry, you were talking Magnolia room, right? Correct. Was there any other viable option? There really isn't. Um, you know, we, we've discussed um, kind of a more long-term issue um, setting up over at communications, taking over kind of the west side of that building and make that into a large commissioner meeting room that's accessible by your offices. But that would require some construction and would take time. Um, but this is and the money. and money. But this this is the only uh, reasonable, quick way. It's the largest room that we have available that we have control over and that we could keep it for an indefinite period of time. Obviously, there's other larger rooms, but the concern being is that you have, you know, very expensive equipment that you want to be able to keep out there. Um, you need control and, and security of that room. Yeah. Well, if, it, if that's the only viable option, I'd, I'd be supportive as well. Mr. Eggers. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, I, must, I may have missed what you were saying, Barry. Are you talking about, are we talking about the June 23rd meeting? Are we talking about the workshops this week or workshops in two weeks, um, which uh, just we've set up. We've set up the workshops to be Zoom. I would suggest if we move forward, we move forward for the twenty third. Okay, I would support that. I think we need to we need to start moving in that direction. So I think it's a good idea. Okay, is everybody okay with that? Having seeing each other face to face for the first time. Okay, great. Yeah. So Barry, 
Barry? Yes. Do we, um, is that, uh, and that hybrid model, is that, that's going to be allowed? So at least four of us will have to let you know that we're going to be there? Well, um, <laughs> um, it would, we, I, like I said, we can accommodate. I would very much encourage us all to be together for our portion of the meeting. Um, and again, I'm, I'm predicting that phase two of the governor's order will allow for what we're predicting. Um, we don't, we usually don't get a 10 day notice of what, what, what we're going to do. So we're, we're kind of guessing at that point. Um, but that we, so if we could come together, then we would allow the public in. If for instance, you want to do that remotely, know that we can do it. It's just a lot more complicated because now I've got to have each commissioner that has a zoom set up to where you can see your peer that's not there. Um, and then I also need to be able to set it up to where the, the, um, the audience can see them also. Um, so it just makes Brian, you know, um, some of his beard turn gray, but we can, we can absolutely accommodate it. <laughs> Welcome to our world. <laughs> I'm trying, trying to hold my tongue here, Barry, but you're doing a good job. <laughs> it's been so good to us, Brian. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, well, I'm okay with appearing together. I don't know about anybody else, but I think if it comes down to it, we can let you all know a week ahead of time whether one of us needs to be either absent or you know, not there. Um, and I'd prefer to have the public there as well. If we can handle the, the crowds in the, the hordes that are going to show up. Um, I have to say this Zoom has been very good for our audience participation. You know, a lot more people seem to be talking to us than usually do, but um, it is pretty awkward and time consuming. So anybody? Yes, Commissioner Eggers. Yeah, I would, I would. I, I mean, I, I think we encourage all of us to meet in person uh, if one can't and wants to do it remotely fine. But I think you said a, you made a really good point there, um, Chair, and that is that uh, I think this is a new opportunity to engage our public. We've always said, how do we engage our public better? Uh, giving them the opportunity to call in on Zoom um, virtually, I think, is one of those ways. So I would I would support us continuing to have that as an option uh, for our, 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 and I know it may mean there's going to be more conversation and more people uh, participating, but that's what we're trying to do. So I think it's a good thing. If we can conti continue to have that for our, our residents, it would be a good idea. As an option, not the only way, right? Right. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys can work on that. <laughs> um, okay. We will move forward. That's um, all of my comments, Madam Chair. Okay. Items from the commission, new business items. Um, yes, Commissioner Long. Thank you, Madam Chair. I know that most of you are aware of how close John Moroney and I were and how proud I have been of being able to continue his legacy with the annual dinner. That said, I thought it might be important and that you might be interested in some of the demographics that have been collected on the new mental health program for first responders that we put in place from our last event. Because keep in mind, we were not able to fully launch it until April 1st. There were an awful lot of dotting the I's and crossing the T's that needed to be done before we were ready to actually begin seeing clients. And I am so proud, and I think he would be too, to share with you that as of the end of April, keep in mind, we launched the program with no fanfare other than letting the chiefs of our largest agencies know that the program was open for business. And from that, we now have 64 clients that have been served. Interesting, the demographics that we're keeping in order to be able to hopefully continue the program. 29 
were from the St. Pete Police Department, 18 were from Clearwater Department, nine were from St. Pete Fire Rescue, four were from the Sheriff's Department, five were from Sunstar, and three were Fish and Wildlife. Um, that said, there were 26% of the sessions were sworn law enforcement officers. Eight of them were EMS providers. 25% were the spouse of a firefighter or EMS person. And 26 were, 41% uh, were children of that demographic. So again, um, I think the numbers are very, very telling. We're beginning to worry about whether or not we'll be able to continue the program with the current funding level that we have. And we're beginning our conversations about how we move forward in this environment that we're living in to think about our next event. So, um, just stay tuned because I think the numbers are going to show that especially now, you know, given the pandemic and the and the stress and <laughs> that our first responders have been on serving all of those clients, as well as now with the riots that are happening nationally, these folks are really under pressure. And so I think now more than ever, they need our help and our support. So that's the end of my report for today, but I hope you're all really, really proud of our former colleague and what we've been able to accomplish in his name. Thank you. Commissioner Welch. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Commissioner Long, for carrying the banner. I'm sure John is looking down smiling, and you'd know if he wasn't. <laughs> Amen uh, to that. <laughs> uh, on a serious note, I just, um, compelled to talk a little bit more about George Floyd. I know we were all shaken uh, by watching that video um, and joining the call for justice for Mr. Floyd. And, you know, we support peaceful protests, uh, but the looting and rioting really undermines the message and puts our entire community at risk. Uh, and I just wanted to state that publicly. I think it's also important to note that law enforcement leaders from around the country uh, including our own Sheriff Gualteri, Sheriff Cronister, Sheriff Naco, uh, Chief Holloway, Chief Slaughter, Chief Vincent from Gulfport, uh, Tampa Chief Dugan have all weighed in and said that kind of conduct uh, is absolutely uh, out of bounds in terms of training and what our law enforcement officers uh, are trained to do uh, with suspects. You know, I think that video really broke something in our country and we're seeing that. Uh, and as we go forward, I think we just need to ask folks to protest, do so peacefully um, and do so responsibly. And as we said earlier, this also ties into COVID. Uh, if you're out there protesting, wear a mask and try to be socially distant because that is still a reality. I don't know. <coughs> but for the majority of officers who do the job the right way, they need to know that we support them. And all the officers need to know that everyone will be held accountable. Uh, so I just want to make that statement, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Walsh. Commissioner Eggers. Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, um, Commissioner Long, thank you for your leadership on um, on that program. I just, I got goosebumps when you told me the numbers that, uh, that are already engaged in that program. And it certainly confirms our concerns with that, that uh, mental health conditions, if you will, of our, of our first responders and um, I, I think what, that's something we need to continue exploring as a county, um, but also through your through that program. And I agree with the comments about Commissioner Maroney. Uh, yeah, he wasn't happy. He'd let us know. Um, and I just wanted to say, Commissioner Welch, thank you for your comments uh, that you just made. Um, clearly, this is an uh, we've got some issues. Um, I really I, I just commend the communities in St. Pete and Clearwater and the the, the, the chiefs there and. Uh, and some of the leadership there and their sheriff um, for, yeah, I would say, paving the way for good conversation and outreach before this happened. Um, and um, we've got to continue that conversation. Um, there are issues, obviously, in our communities. And 
Some of us uh, don't understand all of them, and we need to continue to be educated and learn them uh, from the inside out so that we, that we can feel it a little bit more. Um, but um, I just think it speaks volumes to some community leaders that have already paved the way for, for, for this, uh, for good conversation prior. Again, more work to be done. There's always more work to be done. So, um, and I just had one question, um, Barry, back to uh, the phase two um, on the uh, CARES program. Um, I, <clears throat> I'm very interested in, in bringing these back if we've got some unanimity uh, in, in parts so that we don't have to wait till it's all done. Uh, that may be two weeks, it may be a month. There are pieces right now that we probably have some consensus on that we could move on right now. Um, and uh, so th there's a trade off between it. You don't want to do it too quickly because there may be some other things you want to get the whole program together. But I really do think we need to have start having that conversation sooner than later. And I'd rather start getting some pieces in place that we can roll right into this uh, ex extended phase one. Um, but uh, anyway, any thoughts on how you plan to do that? Well, obviously the, the pieces is, you know, when you launch a federal government program, what they did is they said, we're gonna make these things eligible and it's first come first serve. And when you hit the cap, then there's no more funding available. As part of this, when we begin to open this up is a concern being that we have a cap and the, uh, and the financial impact of the different decisions. If we say, we wanna open this piece up and as we're continuing the community conversation, the only concern being, as we say, as a community, well, wait a minute, this item is a higher priority. So we're trying to understand the financial impacts of each piece of those. I do, I do understand your concern. And I think you're right. There's some pieces that we agree on and we, we need to, you know, kind of move on those. So we were trying to act quickly to be able to turn that around. I know quickly is a relative term, but, um, you know, we, we, we did move on that in a matter of three weeks, um, you know, to be able to put the first check out from the time we announced it um and we're trying to do the same thing with the second piece um and so you know well again we're we've actually done about i think aubrey's done about a dozen interviews and and the seeking that input the, the big consensus was that there was a need to get all segments of the community involved and get their ideas that's where we um we took took the the comments so far we're doing the survey and then trying to get a zoom uh, group meeting to kind of debate the varying um, views in terms of the use of the funds, um, and and so trying to trying to get, understand what the community really believes is the highest priority. It does take a little bit of time, and um, but that's what I'm that's what we're trying to move quickly to do. Okay, I, um, I'm not sure. I, I that's the, I, as you were speaking, and I certainly understand it. I'm I'm feeling July first and. Um, again, we, our program was probably on the on the tail end of some other programs that's created a lot of frustrations. So, you know, we came with this program in just at the beginning of May. So it's not like yeah. we're doing it. It's not like we're doing a bad job. I don't and not, not ever trying to imply that. But because there's we're towards the end and there's so many other frustrations already there. Yeah. The longer we wait on these programs, the more frustration. And there are just so many people out there that have been, that are hurting right now that um uh, it just anyway I, I would I, say don't wait till it's perfect to bring back phase two let's try to try to start putting some of these in place and, and we we will do that we're trying to bring that back quickly and um this is certainly not a you I mean anytime you roll out a program like that and you think you're going to have more people taking advantage of it it's certainly not a time to say success that we rolled out a, a program quickly but in terms of local government programs we did roll it out quickly um, we have over 60 staff members that are taken off of their full-time job to focus on this program. So they're doing a yeoman's job. They're doing outreach. We had 85% of the businesses that applied for funding. We, we had to go back and try to, you know, complete the paperwork. And obviously, you know, that's a, it's, a, it's just a, there's, um, there's some requirements there are federal requirements that we have to have in terms of um, uh, being able to cut a check from the audit process. And so, um, you know, it's nothing's ever easy, but we're we're making sure that we really continue to push on that. Try to clear up the messaging because I know that's a big piece of confusion, and especially around individuals. Um, but we've tried to make this a minimum necessary. When we get into um, other phases of this program, what I'm trying to convey is that there there's we we try to make it minimal necessary. If you lost your job and you can confirm that, 
and you have a bill for your mortgage or your your car payment or your your utility bill, we're going to pay it. Um, so very very minimal requirements. When you get into um, other types of, um, of things, there's going to be additional documentation necessary. We are trying to separate that program for, versus more complex programs. That's the that's a complicated piece, and that's the reason they're trying to get um, trying to get input from all segments of the community. So we're I, I hear you. We are going to move on this. We'll be back to you literally in the middle of here of June. Uh, prior to uh, you know, prior to the end of the month, uh, with some ideas in terms of where to go with that program. Thank you, Commissioner Justice. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, a couple of things. Just want to uh, congratulate Commissioner Long. I think those uh, to have that report. Those numbers are uh, remarkable in both a positive and negative way. But uh, we appreciate the organization's support of those efforts. So thank you for your good work there. Thank um, you. Uh, Barry, I didn't know uh, if, if I know that we hear it on the, the calls a little bit, but if um, and it's on the dashboard to some degree, but the, the long term care facilities and the testing and, and the uh, trainings and all those kind of things. Uh, what, what kind of update can you provide or is I don't know if uh, someone else is on the line that can kind of give us a quick update or sometime this week. Sure. Well, um, so on, on our long term care facilities. Um, you know, they're, first off, they're doing a, a bang up job, you know, in terms of trying to coordinate uh, and care for residents. And, you know, these these are I mean, obviously, this is an unprecedented type of pandemic. And, you know, they're trying to keep the residents safe. However, we have had some flare ups, as you know, it's been reported and we've had to de-escalate uh, the compression and, and move them and work with our area hospitals who have also worked in partnership with us hand in hand um, because of the issue statewide. The state began a testing program. Um, they're in the second phase of that program where they're going to test um, about half of the facilities they mailed test kits to. They're going to complete the test, mail them back. We're going to see the data as they, they get those. We do not have data yet from that. <clears throat> they're completing hands-on testing at uh, the other half of the uh, long-term care facilities. Sep and so, again, we don't have data about that. They're finishing that up this week. Um, separately from that, however, we work with our fire and EMS personnel and they volunteered to go and, and, and actually inspect each facility. It's like with anything, you know, having a second set of eyes to make sure we have good infection control practices um, and oversight uh, in our facilities is important. So they have literally inspected all but just a few of the 250 long-term care facilities that we have. Where there's been issues, identified them, they point them out, the facility takes corrective action, you know, and makes improvements. Um, and so that's been a, a, a tremendous um, value to our community and trying to do everything we can to keep, you know, keep our, our seniors safe. So um, that's ongoing. Um, we do see it. I mean, obviously, when you have a problem in a facility, it can very easily, um, you know, get out of hand. And this is our most vulnerable population group. So uh, we've paid special attention to that. We're, we're continuing to move forward, work with both the state and with our fire and EMS and with our, our hospitals on developing strategies to care for our seniors. And, and that'll be ongoing for the foreseeable future. Well, I think, I think it's important because as we kind of, you, you see uh, our community getting back to a semi-normal out there when you're out and about. And uh, these are the folks that, unless you have a relative in one of these facilities, you may not notice it in your day-to-day -day life. So it's really important that we keep the focus on it uh, for all those things you just mentioned. But the training and the infection controls uh, is something I, I'm really, really concerned about. So uh, I appreciate our local EMS guys getting in there. And then Madam Chair, just on a final, on a maybe a, a happier note, I want to wish uh, our good friend, Commissioner Dave Eggers, a very happy birthday today. Yes, happy birthday. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Commissioner Justice, are you sending out uh, home deliveries of those some more well, cupcakes? We all those look really good. <laughs> That, that's what I'm talking about. That's right? one of those must be present to win, Madam Chair. Uh, damn. Okay. Anyway, anything else? So you disappointing, Commissioner Justice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you shouldn't be posting things like that. It's obscene. Exactly. Yeah. All right. We are adjourned. Thank, Thank you, Madam you Chair. Much. Thank you. Thank you.